Fred Tuesday, but it's Thursday, but hey, it's got a T in it. Um, yeah, so I just sold the wee Sakai guitar, the wee um, 70s top 20 Tesco, blah 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 thing. They're fun guitars, eventually I'm going to end up keeping one of them. It's just that they, they kind of go for much more money than what they're worth. In my eyes, um, if you're after something bad, the guy who bought it was into Sonic Youth. And he said he was going to tune it to F sharp. It's like, okay. So what is F sharp? Is that pure? It's basically F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, D D, something like that. Like okay. So I kind of want to watch there because I'd forgotten to put new strings on it. The strings that were on it weren't absolutely terrible, so I kind of left them. Um, but obviously he's putting on crazy strings. I don't know what sort of gauges. I think I think I don't know whether he's putting on different, I think it was like two low F sharps and then a high F sharp, something like that. Each to their own. Um, yeah, so almost immediately as soon as I've got the money in the bank, uh, I've seen an amp. Um, a unbelievably cool looking amp. I've kind of, to be honest, I almost built one that looked like this. You know the Mesa Boogie amps you get that are made of, uh, they're like wood and they've got like the basket weave fronts on them. Um, which, to be honest, reminds me very much of the kitchen chairs that I used to have when I was growing up. I always remember them. Um, it kind of looks like that. This is a Carrollton amp, which I've never heard of, but apparently made in Scotland. Ah, so it's a, a Scottish amp. Um, plus it looks cool as hell. Um, so I'm just going to the Bear's Den to pick it up. I've actually I'd asked the guy if it was okay to test it and he's like, oh, I don't know, just because of that um, that PV Valve King that I bought that turned out to uh, <laughs> turned out to go on fire when I went home. Um, so this is a, it's got a solid state preamp, no, a solid state power amp, but a valve preamp, and it's meant to be based on a sort of Mesa Boogie, but not a dual rectifier. I, I don't really know anything about these things, to be honest, I don't even look up. Mesa boogies because they're thousands of pounds. Um, this one is not thousands of pounds, so it should be fun. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I've got so many amps just now. I don't need. I mean, I was. I, I managed a hell of a long time just having the soft tech. Many many years that was more than I am, and then I got the wee Laney for playing in the house, which ended up sort of using because I quite. I do really like that. The currently I've got that. Um, Oh god, I've got another one as well. So I'm going to have to sell some. Um, whether it, whether this one makes the cut or not, I have to be honest, I'm kind of swung with the idea of it being uh, made in Scotland. It does seem rather nice. Plus it looks cool as fuck. It really does. Um, so I've taken my Washburn A5 with me to um, to try it out in the guy's garage. He's partly home from Australia, looking after his mum just now. I, don't, I, I got the impression he doesn't have a guitar, so provided it sounds okay, I'm pretty much going to take it. Take it the, the, the slightly cross country route. This is not the way the sat nav told me to go, but um, well, I, I, I actually haven't worked out how to use sat nav yet properly on my new phone. When I was away getting that, and when I was away getting the top 20, got the Tesco Sakai guitar. I, I, I knew roughly, I, I worked, I looked at the map, worked it roughly where it was going, and then said, I could just use the sat nav for the last five minutes. Turned it on, and the sat nav that comes in the phone is absolutely awful. It was, I think it was, um, it's like it was um, directed by like a Hollywood movie or something like that. So instead of showing you the road ahead and where your junctions were, it showed you the road ahead and where your junctions were, and then decided to do like drone swoops. So it zoomed away out and was spinning round and you know doing sort of Jesse Ray helicopter shots and it's like I would just want to see where it is I'm going. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want. You know, whoo, going spinning round 180 degrees and showing you from all different angles and stuff. Do I need to look up? Apparently I can get a, an app that's just um, Google Maps, which I pretty much do. I don't need no fancy graphics. Literally just having a, an overhead map with a wee dot on it telling me where I am and a line showing me where to go, that's what I want. I don't, I don't need no fancy swipping. It's actually not that nice today. I was going to say it's quite a nice day. 
So this is, this is to kind of quell the disappointment. Last night I found a, a guitar. <laughs> to be honest, I've had my money's worth out anyway on Facebook Marketplace. I, I, I might end up with it, but um, it's like it's a Dean acoustic that's got a vinyl graphic applied to the top of it of Jesus battling Satan. And it's like, it sounds, I looked at it going, oh my god, that's the most awful thing I've ever seen. But the more I looked at it, the more interesting it got. So I sent it to, I sent a picture to Scott, saying, I'll buy this. And he was just like, going, oh, you up to that. And I was like, oh, it was your birthday. And he was like, no, you buy it, no, you buy it. And then we were starting, the more you looked at the picture, it was like, Jesus was like whiter than me. And I'm Scottish, as white as you can be, pretty much. And uh, he had a mullet. And he was arm wrestling Satan in front of a volcano. And it's just like, you're... So, <laughs> eventually, we got, me and Scott came to a compromise. Scott was like, right, I'll come and pick you up and drive you there if you buy it. So I was like, okay. After, I had, had an hour's worth of fun with it already, to be honest. Um, the worst, the, the worst or best thing ever. Um, so, and I, I thought I messaged that this morning, and um, the woman said there was someone picking it up on Tuesday, and it's Thursday just now, which seemed a bit strange. I was just wondering, um, I did, did uh, a bit sneakily going, what sort of person does that to a guitar? And I, I, you, you get like a limited profile picture in Facebook me Messenger, or in Facebook Marketplace, so it gives you their last half dozen photos or something. And one of our photos was like a meme, and it was like a lion roaring with Jesus nailed to a cross behind it that said, vaccinated by the blood of Christ. And I thought, oh God. <laughs> it like, so it was a bit, it was going to be a bit of a strange day out for me and Scott. Um, but unfortunately, that fell through. Not that it wasn't in any way nasty, it just it seemed a bit strange. Very much, um, like, pretty, pretty much extreme. American evangelical, is that what they call it, a creationist type view of, I was going to say Catholicism, Christianity, I was pretty sure that uh, Jesus didn't arm wrestle Satan in the Bible, unless it was maybe, I don't know, no, I don't, I don't think that happened um, in the Bible, but, so that that's gone, actually, to be honest, I even looked up the vinyl graphic thing, and see, once, once you said it was, Someone was coming to pick it up, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to maybe try and do that, because that would be hilarious. I thought it would be brilliant to take the download. Um, like, with all the... Not, not that any bands are ever satanic, really. You know what I mean? And obviously some are. I think most of them are just... Even, even like, the ones that are commonly thought of as being satanic, like your slayers and stuff, aren't satanic. Is it not worshipping Satan, just anti-religion? Which is a different thing. Um, in order to worship Satan, you've got to believe he exists. If you believe Satan exists, you must believe God exists, therefore you're religious. So it's kind of... Uh, it's, a, it's a whole thing that I'm not going to go into. Probably because I don't really understand it. Um, but that's how it goes. So that was a little disappointment. So this, this app um, could be good. Might be really good. I was looking up the app, the brand. There's very little online. There was a... I saw a blog. They only made them for a couple of years in the mid nineties, and apparently they made this pure amazing combo thing, the one that I'm going to look at with the tube preamp. And then after that, they decided that what they were going to do was make an all valve amp, and it was called a Camel. And according to all reports online, they were awful. And then they, they just closed down and stopped. So I need to look up and find out whereabouts in Scotland they were actually made. It does say made in Britain on the back, rather than made in Scotland, but hey. Um, so it should be interesting. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even look and see it. I think it was 65 watts, I said it was. I think it's a 1 by 12 speaker. Just looking by the size of it. So it might actually, oh god, it might actually be the same size as the PV Valve King. The 1 by 12 one. If it is a 12 inch speaker, it is, it's going to be that size, isn't it? But it looks to have uh, plenty of knobs on it. And push button switches for different gain stages. It's got like two preamps. So, uh, to be honest, I'm looking at it thinking if it works and it sounds decent, it's worth it for a couple of videos just out of interest because there's no videos of it online. Um, 
or not not my my type of video, you know, someone talking and stuff. I think there, I think there was a you know one of the, the headless people who like to play guitars and videos playing blues on one, so they just like you turn it on and it's just literally looking at the body of the guitar with a headless body playing blues. Uh, don't see so many of those videos anymore. I did what was I was looking up before. Like it was a Yamaha my pal Taylor bought. Um, he sent me a, a message the other night saying, I found this Yamaha the local cash me belts, what do you think? Do you want me to buy it for you? And I was like, yeah, give me a wee bit to think about it. That looks rather interesting. Really good, really good price. And then I was looking up at it, looked, looked some, up some videos, and the only videos I could find were of the headless body. When I say headless body, I don't mean headless body guitar, I mean headless person. You know, just a body shot of someone playing the blues on it. Um, and then half an hour, he, he just go, ah, sorry, I'm going to buy it. I was like, oh, no. Because I was kind of going to buy it, but I'm quite pleased that he took it. It was too good to, it's one of those things that you kind of don't want it to not go... I don't want it, but I don't want it to go cheap, if that makes sense. Um, I've had that a few times, you know, it's like sitting there and it's like, especially me and Scott, sitting like looking at it, he bought a, a new Ibanez last week. He's got his Team J Craft RG, and this was basically a very similar type guitar, but uh, in fluorescent orange, a Japanese RG blah blah blah, something. But this one, slightly different enough, it's got a maple fingerboard and it's got a... Uh, Instead of having HSH layout, it's got a hot blade in the neck and had a normal pickup in the bridge. So it should be quite interesting. Um, and it was, he was, I said to him, I said, what do you think of this? He said, oh, it's great. Are you going to buy it? And I was like, and I'll back off. And I was like, no, I don't really need an Ibanez RG. Although, I do kind of, I had one before. And they are, they are awful good guitars. They just don't. I've got my RG530, the Roadster one, the one that's got the amazing paint job on it. And for me, it's just like that does so... so it's a kind of similar concept, I suppose, because it is an RG, but it's just a, a, a much classier shape and look, rather than being the, you know, the Apache attack helicopter thing, a bit pointy and maybe dare I say it, maybe a little bit soulless looking, not playing, playing, they play absolutely flawless. My pal Alan's actually selling a RG350, if anyone's interested, anyone's looking for a guitar, um, it's good, I put a uh, Bill Lawrence, is that an L400, LX400 pickup in it, the Dimebag Darrow Blade one, and a good guitar, but again, just something about the Ibanez RGs, just are a bit lacking in prettiness somewhere. So I'm actually almost, almost there. This, this app was only in Bear's Den, which is only, well, 20 minutes away, I suppose. Um, I'm just obviously, I, I keep timing it really badly. It's, a, it's always, whenever I go out, it either seems to be, oh, the primary schools have just got out, or, oh, the secondary schools have just got out. Try to, you should really try and time these things to be a bit more, you know, driving's great when it's quiet, when there's other cars on the road it can be pretty shit, um, especially let's not be sexist here, but when it's a uh, school run tends to be incredibly bad drivers, um, where men or women maybe don't drive very often, so the only time they ever actually really drive is when they drive to go and pick up the kids from school, and they just like to park anywhere, and just stop in the middle of the road and get out, so actually that had happened to me last week, week before, I was going down the road and this uh, man or woman had stopped to talk to somebody with a pram, obviously going to pick the kids up, and had literally stopped three feet away from the curb and just stopped in the middle of the road. And you're just like, could you not like go? Maybe, maybe not on the pavement. I don't know if that's legal, but like near the pavement, rather than being pretty much on the white line in the middle of the road, and just stopping. You know, and co completely oblivious to the fact that there was queues of traffic behind them and in front of them trying to come the other way just because they just decided to stop. Or even like where they were, it was like, you know, can you not just say, I'll, 
All right, Gene, I really want to talk to you. Um, do you want to walk another 20 yards and we'll turn into that wee, that wee street rather than sitting on the main road? No. No. Yeah, so, 15 minutes of blabbering. I'll see you when I've got the amp. Oh. I'm back, I don't know if you can see it. I'll do it when I get stopped at these lights up here. But I just bought it. The thing is solid wood. Like, uh, kind of looks a bit like a West Tone Thunder. So it's like, I think it's a solid ash cabinet or something like that that it's in. And it sounds loud as flip. Um, all the knobs are pretty scratchy. This guy uh, moved to Australia in 2005, I think he said. Um, so it's been in his bedroom cupboard at his mum's house since 2005. Um, but it looks pretty damn good. Um, I think I, I was going, I, I just said, you know, is there any, any chance I can try it out, bring a guitar? And he was like, oh, I suppose I could take it out to the guys. But I think, to be honest, he was quite, he wanted to make sure it worked. He said, I can have money back as long as it blows up within the next week. Um, I don't know how easy it would be to get parts for this thing, but. I mean, surely amp parts, surely a, a capacitor or whatever it is that needs to be replaced or a switch, it's just a capacitor or a switch. You can make other ones, I doubt it's, it needs to be a very specific, um, it's not like a car where you're like, oh, I need to get a, I'm going to say carburetor because I know that much about cars. You need to get the correct one that fits your car, but I think amps are a little bit less than that. What I also said was, um, I don't know how true this is, but uh, if you do need to repair it, you can use Mesa Boogie parts, right? Because Mesa Boogie bought the company and then used a lot of the things that we heard, re researched. Does that sound right? Mesa Boogie are like the biggest, most expensive amp manufacturer there is. Um, and they bought like, you, you just wonder, I mean, you, you don't, you don't, I don't know how, I, I, need, I do need to do some serious research on it. But the clean sound on it is phenomenal. 65 watts apparently, and it's loud. And he said it's all valve though, I don't think it is. Um, it doesn't have a standby switch for the start. So that was that was quite a successful little jaunt, I think. Um, and to be honest, just looking at this thing, that this might be my new amp. Um, it just you know, all I would be really using. It's got like uh, push buttons on the front. It's LEDs. It does not look like this was not a cheap thing. New, um, I guarantee it. So I don't know, early 90s, late 80s maybe, made in Scotland, and definitely not a cheap amp. It's even got a, it's like it's got reverb on it, the reverb's on the back. It's got two reverbs, reverb for the read channel, and uh, reverb for the, the clean channel. He said he used to gig it and they just mic'd it up. I mean, to be honest, the volume of this app was terrifying. <laughs> it's like, Really, it's, uh, it sounds really clean. I think it's got like a Celestian speaker on it. No, so this, is, this could be quite interesting. I'm, and I, I'm going to argue that it's boutique. A boutique amp. None of this using amplifiers that normal people can have. I'll be, hopefully, possibly, if it works, using amplifier that nobody else is, even knows what it is. But it's just like, with its, with its natural varnished wood cabinet that it's in. Yeah. You just kind of look at it and go, wow, that's... And it does, it does kind of look... I, I think, to be honest, it's more likely it's a copy of a Mesa Boogie. So I've definitely seen Mesa Boogies that look kind of on the similar range. These things are £5,000, though. So, uh, and maybe a little bit shinier on this one. Oh, I'm saying that. Maybe once I polish it up, it'll look a little bit better. Um, yeah, but... Fingers crossed, this, is, this could be a, a defining moment. Of, uh, of guitarness when suddenly Malco goes solid state. Yeah, especially since you don't get valves anymore. Apparently, I was watching a thing, uh, someone sent me a link the other day about how the. It was, uh, for the last 20 years, there's only been two factories that made, still made tubes. One of them in Russia and one of them in China. And apparently, the one in China burnt down 10 years ago and they never bothered rebuilding it. So. The current troubles, you might find that um, valves become a thing of the past. So apparently Fender have scaled down their building of amps and 
all these things. Uh, I, I was aware that all the the tubes you buy, you know, whether they're JJ or whatever other make they are, are all basically the same tubes. But what they do is they just buy lots of them and then test them. So the ones that you get that are, have desirable traits are the ones that are branded and then the other ones are sold off as cheaper ones. Um, I think there's an element of that. Because I can't have my lady, I think, needs valves. Partly, I think, the problem with the lady was the fact that it was, because uh, I couldn't see it was on and it didn't have a standby switch. I kind of had it on all day, every day. Or for, you know, all evening. Every evening anyway, you know, from sort of four o'clock to midnight type thing, it was just on cooking the valves. So that's what I'm noticing with the PV, the PV just now is because it's actually quite noisy, but partly because it's 50 watts. Um, and I can see the button on the front and it's got a standby switch. I'll just have it sitting on standby all day and then just turn it on when I want to use it. Um, which is a much, a much better way of doing it, I think. Um, yeah, so going home to play a new amp and I'm not going to buy any more amps, even though in the last four or five months I've bought the wee Blackstar HT5, which is really good. The PV Royal 8, the wee 5 watt one, which is really good. And the PV 50 watt VK112, which is really good. And I paid £160 to get that fixed. So, although I like it, the, the 50 watt one, I, I think it's going to have to go. Just because I think it's worth 250, 300 quid. Um, and that's quite a lot of money. Uh, and I think probably the wee Black Star's got to go as well. Um, unfortunately. Although I kind of like to keep it. I'm getting fed up justifying having. Them. Obviously, I've got plenty of guitars. I'm not. I'm not short of guitars. And it's, I don't really, maybe if, I know lots of people, especially my pal T-Gun has, I don't know, 10 amps, probably more than that actually, all different types and stuff like that, which is, because he, he does a lot of recording, whereas I tend to not really, I haven't done any recording for ages, but even when I did do record, I just wanted to sound like the one sound I want. That's what I found when I was in the studio as well, it's like, my pedal board consists of the fuzz pedal and a tuner, because I just like the sound of the soft tech, that's kind of it, you know, it's like, Maybe just been a bit old fashioned and a bit Black Sabbath y and stuff like that, where I kind of have got a sound that I like, which is that and any more, you know, maybe just not my thing. Anyhow, I'm, I'm, I'm almost home. Just getting the victim. Look at that. Look at it. Doesn't it look absolutely wonderful? Look at the wood. Lots of channels on it, it's got the basket weave and it's made in Scotland. So this is Scotland, so it was made here somewhere. Um, I will need to find out exactly where it was made. It'll be like, it's bound to be like a, an industrial estate in Hillington or something like that, but I mean, it'll not be somewhere really cool, but it'll definitely be around these parts. So, I'm gonna try to look, look down there and look at the camera. All right, so. Knobs are master gain drive. That's very good to so you can actually see it. Yeah, so master gain drive gain. Only channel volume and presence. Master volume. Clean volume. Treble middle bass. And there's four switches. Gain boost. Can you, can you see that the shadow? No, probably not. So maybe did not done it when it was sunny, which is um, a rare event here anyway in Scotland. Yeah, so we look at what this thing's made of. Yeah, just absolutely stunning. And it's not that's not plasticky with that. You, know, you can see the grain going around the edge. <laughs> Most impressive. Yeah. So master volume. That's the one that's a little bit scratchy. Um, you're clean, that's just a, 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 an overall EQ. When you hit the lead button, this light goes from green to red, and it gives you these two, or there's your volume and there's your gain, these two together. If you hit the presence, 
when you're on the lead channel, it cuts in and out this knob. Um, preamp 2 turns on these two. Um, so you get like a drive and a gain. <laughs> so there's just gain, drive, gain, volume, gain. Yeah. Uh, so that's the preamp 2 button, and then the gain booster only works on the either the lead channel with this this button has to be in red mode for the gain to come in um, the gain boost but it works with the preamp too as well so very a very solidly built thing um, i turn it round jeez oh. <laughs> I say 23 kilograms this thing but that speaker which you can't see because the sun's not shining on it if I put it there hey. you see it there Sit on the ground, maybe you can see it. It's got a big, um, this is a big H and H speaker. I think it's a hundred watt or something like that. It's a twelve hundred series. It says on it. Um, weighs a ton. Power socket. External speaker, eight or sixteen ohms. That's pretty good. Um, made in Britain. Uh, the other one I saw an HGL. It's an HGS high gain series one hundred. Maybe it's hundred watt. You would have thought being called an H HGS 100, it's 100 watt, wouldn't you? Um, I think I said 65 in the video. Um, yeah, so there's this foot switch, which is a five pin DIN plug here, which I think turns on those four buttons on the front, probably. So I might buy a five pin plug and then just sit and try connecting the things, see what it does, see whether I need momentary switches or latching switches, but I'm pretty sure that will do. It's only a couple of quid for the actual socket, so I'll just mess about with it and see what it needs done. I line out, effects loop, and then there's the two reverbs for the clean and the lead, which I now notice is cleverly done so that when you're actually reaching it, reaching into it from the front, because obviously if you're looking at it from the front, it's lead and clean, so it's like, clearly you can just turn around and just guess at that. Um, there's the, that's a, a Made in America Accutronics reverb tank there, which um, I can't get. I should probably have taken the back off, actually. Um, in there, sitting vertically, is that normal? Um, this piece of wood just looks like someone's put it on themselves. I, I don't think this is an original piece of wood. Um, yeah. So, again, just... Uh, the wood it's made of is just awesome. Oh, it's two-piece. Why is it two-piece in the front? No, it's not. It's two-piece side as well. That's a spot down the middle, isn't it? Ah, uh, see, it's not... It's not pure tone wood. Um, I'm very pleased with the, the the general aesthetics of it. The only thing I think cheapens a little bit is this power switch, which nowadays you would just get like a, some sort of dual type thing, but it kind of dates it quite nicely. Um, I like it. And these knobs are cool as well. And these switches are actually very responsive, which I quite like. I think it, um, the the foot switch. If I when I, when I if I can manage to get it working, it'll be momentary buttons. Um, and it's like with four things in a five pin socket. Apparently, the, if you look on the back, there was actually a like a Marshall foot switch thing, oh, or a, a normal jack socket foot switch, which kind of looks stuck on afterwards, maybe. Um, so I'm not sure. I wonder. The guy said he tried sticking a Marshall foot switch into it and it didn't do anything, but I wonder if it would maybe turn on the reverb. Oh, that could be the fifth pin, couldn't it? Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that have been very clever if they'd managed to make it so that you had reverb on and off and then the lead presence preamp to and boost things on a foot switch? A five button foot switch, that'd be pretty cool. No, because you did, you did have a return, so there can only be four. Yep, and then there comes another plane, obviously on the flight path today. So, rocking, I'll see you inside. Hey YouTube, so I, here's my amp, which I'm going to be standing in front of. My Carlton High Gain Series 2, which I picked up yesterday. Um, I will do a proper video for this later once I know, try and um, elicit some comments perhaps on it, because these were made in Scotland, Glasgow apparently, I think. Uh, so. People of a certain age might remember seeing them in shops and know a lot bit more about them. There's pretty much nothing online. 
Um, so if you get any information about this, this is more of a sort of look at my new amp video. Uh, so I'm using my Washburn Hawk just because this sort of grain on it kind of reminds me of the grain on the top of it. It's too dark, can't see it. But you saw it, hopefully the, my troggly bit with the camera on my forehead when I was outside. You know what it looks like. So here we go, <laughs> unclean. Uh, only real fault I can find with it is the master volume seems to be very intermittent between like one, zero and zero and four sort of thing or zero and three so it's kind of might need to change that pot i did take it to bits last night to see what was inside it um uh, and squish the pots with contact cleaner but the, the master volume's a bit it's totally fine once you get to four but by that point it's really loud just, just a clean channel uh no pedals plugged in time actually playing with humbuckers i was playing my strap through it last night it sounded amazing um and then i had a great idea i found uh, was it mr muscle polish stuff in the kitchen i was like so i thought i'll polish that wood up make it shiny and this stuff pure stank and pure made my face all itchy and all that so that after i'd sort of done that i had to banish it to <laughs> out in the hall just because it was stinging my eyes so much i never actually got to play it last night so today i'll be playing this mostly the Carlton amp. The cleans on it are fantastic. This thing's loud as hell. channel uh, the lead channel with a green light which is clean so if I put on the the, the lead channel instead <laughs> good for um especially I haven't, I haven't said told you yet but i'll tell you in a minute uh, so it's also got preamp two which i don't know about set maybe really loud <laughs> It's a little bit noisy, but to be honest, it's not. It was with the strap. In this case, it's got humbuckers in it. This one, I chose a guitar that didn't have chorus splits, which was stupid, but this, this one was quite <laughs> which you can click in. <laughs> 
which is obviously going to make it louder. through it just because the clean on it um, I'm always a believer that clean with humbuckers isn't as good as clean with single coils not I'm saying it's bad though Touch the master volume in case it comes out. No, turn the clean volume a lot out. I did just 
just put a rhythm track in, but I don't think this guitar is loud enough to cope with the... Yeah. <laughs> it's much, um, it's probably clean. Nope, wrong button. That's... This guitar's not loud enough. Too long, so what? But, I, but if I use this guitar, I'll turn the volume down a little bit, so I can not that much. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's all solid state because I know that because I looked inside it. The guy said it was a. Um, he said it was all tube actually when I met him, but in the vid in the the advert it said it a uh, tube preamp. It doesn't. It's all solid state, but it kind of goes into my. See my thinking about the tube snobbery of which I am one of the tube snobs. I think one of the problems is um, once tubes became the thing that everyone wanted, they did they stopped making expensive solid state amps. So you would get, okay, now you get the moduli ones, which I'm not really that keen on because there's too much going on for me to wrap my head around. But, um, you know, like just like a good quality solid state amp was less and less. So when everyone says, oh, trim's better than solid state, most of the solid state amps you get are budget, you know, sub 100 quid 
up to I don't know fifty watt or something like that. You know your 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 wee Laneys and PVs and Marshall MGs and stuff like that are solid state and they're they're pretty good for what they are. But you don't really get like you know you c compare that to my JCM eight hundred, which is a thousand pounds or eight hundred pounds or something like that. Well, it's eight hundred pounds as opposed to eighty pounds. It's ten times the price. How can you compare the two? Whereas if I think if they continue to if you actually bought if you still make them the reason obviously they tried making them and people didn't want them so this um sounds really expensive even though it is solid state i think partly to do with it's the, the maybe the weight in it to be honest the thing weighs i tried my wee luggage scales on it and i basically really struggled to i couldn't i couldn't actually lift it and look at the dial it was that heavy it's 24 kilograms something like that um it's like you know it's way the same as that <laughs> it's basically but it's only it's only we um that might be something to do with it in fact it's, it's basically the back of that speaker the back of the speaker's got like what looks like a heat sink on it like a big solid cast block or something that size on the back of the speaker um i say it's an h and h speaker that's in it so my thinking just now is i i, I got it i thought it looked like the mesa boogie because i like i love the basket weave cover i was actually but i built that cabinet there i looked to get the basket weave cover couldn't find it or couldn't find where to get it so it doesn't have it um, I, I I just think it looks great, like my kitchen kitchen seats when I was growing up. Um, I feel it's a little bit let down by the power switch, which you can't see, which is just like a it kind of looks like it's from an arcade or something like that. But I mean, that's fine. But everything else looks really pretty classy. As I said when yesterday on Facebook Marketplace from the Guitar Trade Center, actually they had the Mesa Boogie one. I think it was five four grand something like that. And it was goddamn shiny though. It looked more like that Washburn did, you know. It's like rather than looking like somebody's made it, it was very much, you know, like a, a super shiny that kind of thing. But whereas that kind of looks a bit tabley, um, or wardrobey. But then that's an, an an inch thick solid to what I think is ash cover on it. Um, you know, it's not like stuff that's it's not chipboard with a plastic that looks like it. Um. And I thought maybe, when I took it to bits, I thought maybe someone's made that cabinet and put an amp in it. But now I'm not sure. I've got, I was doing a wee bit of research this morning. I couldn't find any pictures of another one like that. But um, somebody in, I'm sure they said they paid euros for it. So in Europe somewhere, had one. They said they paid the extra to get it in the wooden cabinet. And the I can't find... The only one I can find that looks any that, that's the same model as that is a, it's a head, and um, it kind of it's got that sort of eighties, not H and H's because they look pretty good. But see, all when you whenever you see PAs that I mean, I used to get lots of PAs made here. I was um what was the one I had? Was it called a custom? And there's like a McGregor and stuff like that. The the old sort of you know plywood with Tolex on it. It's really horrible looking Tolex. It looks really cheap and nasty, which is what. That looks like I did find, there's another amp called a Camel that they did, which is apparently all valves. Um, and it basically, it looks exactly the same. It's got this, well, without, I haven't, I haven't seen one with a wooden cabinet, but you get the basket weave front, the sort of rubbery, horrible Tolex outside. But the, the layout looks to be exactly the same, right down to the four buttons and the on switch and all the knobs seem to be in the same order and everything. So I think when they made the valve version of that Camel one, they basically used the same chassis. <laughs> so we've got this number of knobs that say this on them. That's fine. We'll just put valves in the back. Also, one of the things I saw looked mental. Um, this is of the half a dozen picture, pictures I could find of Carlton amps. Um, they had one that looked. In fact, I think it was. It looked, it looked the same as that. They all kind of the, the actual amp bit looks the same, and it had tubes in it. But the tubes weren't tubes. They were like uh, they looked. It was, clearly some sort of PCB that you could, what I think it is, I mean, I don't know, and why don't you get these? It's like, uh, obviously you've got a tube amp, you can't get tubes, you can put transistors on a PCB in a, in a tube basically, and then plug it into the socket. So why couldn't you just get something that does, it's got the same pins on it as a, as a valve, but it, instead it's like solid state circuitry. That seems to be, that's what it looks like is in, the, in the, just in a random photo, I mean, if you t type in Carlton High Gain series, there are like three photos online, um, and they're all of that same one with the, there's a head, 
and the camel there was a little bit more on it but still not very much so I'm hoping that somebody knows something about them maybe I'll probably do a better video than this um, a bit more once I know a little bit more about it um, but to be honest I think it's sounding rather good and um, certainly it's I'm going to keep it there for a while and see how we get on with it and then I'll have to do some a being between different amps and see which ones I'm going to keep I can't keep them all I decided the, the, the PV Valve King Royal 8 has to go. Um, actually, I saw someone selling a, an Epiphone Valve Junior on Facebook Marketplace today for 150 quid, and the Valve 8 much better than the Valve Juniors. I've had a couple of Valve Juniors. I had one, didn't like it, it was rubbish, uh, and then a year later I saw another one and went, oh, but it's all Valve, it must be good, and then bought it, didn't like it, it was rubbish. So the, 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 the wee Valve King's a much better amp than the it's also got three times as many knobs, um, as in it's got three knobs, not just one. So it's got like a gain and a volume and a tone. But the gain and the volume just make that's that's you need that on the amp so you've got a little bit of control over it, um, rather than just being a volume. So you're kind of oh, I want distortion, I'll just turn it up so it's ear bleedingly loud. So this one uh, it goes so loud, it's stupid. I mean, that's it at two. But it doesn't sound wee, it sounds much bigger than it was. And I went around to the guy's house and I, I plugged, I took the A5 there, the red one, in, and I was just, you know, just kind of, and it was just like, whoa, where, where's the amp? That's just that wee thing there is making all that noise. Headroom is pure ridiculous. It's also, I think, might have a lot to do with the, the speaker and just general weight. So I'll, I'll try and turn it up. It's, you're not going to hear it on YouTube, but I'll, if I continue talking, so. The master volume is crunchy though, so I will. It, it, it's, it's at two just now, so it'll be. It'll probably cut out between two and four. And now it won't cut out. The thing is, it doesn't. It doesn't sound louder. It's kind of the same what that big bass amp does. It's like it doesn't really sound any louder. It's just that you suddenly be like. To be honest, I'm kind of sold on the idea of it uh, looking like that. And when I got it, I thought, that oh, looks just like the Mesa Boogie one. It doesn't really. The Mesa Boogie one does look a lot more expensive. That looks like somebody made it in a shed a little bit. But um, very nice. And I like the idea of having something a bit a bit different. It's probably not that good for demoing um, stuff. But there you go. Rock on, catch you all later. <laughs> Don't know how, how I'm going to edit this. Um, it's probably, well, it's half an hour here, it's going to be for an hour long or something like that. Rocking. Uh, so it's Friday night. Tomorrow night, uh, I've still got a video I did with Scott. We're looking up stuff I haven't put out yet. And then Sunday night live stream. So see you on Sunday. Rock on.